It's Spurgeon. Every day that we look at devotionals and spend the time in a devotional setting, you know, God honors our desire to meet with Him and to be aware of what He might have for us as we read through the scriptures and as we study and apply sometimes just devotionals, things like Spurgeon or some of the other ones that we've been reading, that He can arrange the circumstances of your life and cause them to fit into what He's purposed in His plan for your life by the things that He says in what you're reading that day. Because as you choose to commit your way to the Lord, then He meets you where you're at as you are seeking Him and desiring to hear from Him. He alone can do that. No one else could. You can't call it kismet. You can't call it coincidence. But you can call it design or purpose of someone or something that is outside of our way of thinking and our dimension that can cause these things to happen, which we know is God. Now in Spurgeon, today, as he's speaking to you and as he's speaking to me, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Nevertheless, as if notwithstanding all the foolishness and ignorance which David had just been confessing to God, not one atom the less was it true and certain that David was saved and accepted and that the blessing of being constantly in God's presence was undoubtedly his. Fully conscious of his own lost estate and of the deceitfulness and vileness of his nature, yet by a glorious outburst of faith he sings, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Believer, you were forced to enter into Asaph's confession and acknowledgement. Endeavor in like spirit to say, Nevertheless, since I belong to Christ, I am continually with God. By this is meant continually upon his mind. He is always thinking of me for good and for my good. Continually before his eye, the eye of the Lord which never sleeps, but is perpetually watching out for my welfare continually in his hand, so that none shall be able to pluck me from there, continually on his heart, worn there as a memorial, even as the high priest bore the names of the twelve tribes upon his heart forever. Thou always thinkest of me, O God, the bowels of thy love continually yearn towards me. Thou art always making providence work for my good. Thou hast set me as a signet upon thine arm. Thy love is as strong as death, Many wet waters cannot quench it, neither can the floods drown it. Surprising grace, thou seest me in Christ, and though in myself abhorred, thou beholdest me as wearing Jesus' garments and washed in his blood, and thus I stand accepted in your presence. I am thus continually in your favor, continually with thee. Here is the comfort for the tried and afflicted soul. Vexed with the tempest within, look at the calm without. Nevertheless, O oh, say it in thy heart, and take peace it gives. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. As Spurgeon details it, and what he's describing is simply the fact that oftentimes, when you sin, when you blow it, when you've made a mistake, when you've chosen to go your own way, when you've forgotten the fact that all things may be lawful to you, but not all things are expedient, then you discover in that reality that God is with you that God is in you, and that God is working through you to accomplish His purpose. So, nevertheless, though you may have caused yourself some frustration, aggravation, and even some consequence of reaping what you sow because of the things that you have done, you will pay for, God likewise has already provided a way of escape that you should come out from it because He is with you. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So notwithstanding the sin that you might find yourself in, or the choices that you made that were bad, or the fact that you took off and thought you could do your own thing, and you found that you need to turn around and go the other way, God is saying to you today, He is with you. He will sustain you. He will keep you from falling and present you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. And that because He is the author and the finisher of your faith, you need not fear the fact that you will fall down and you will blow it and you will make mistakes. 
The scripture teaches in Proverbs that a righteous man falls down seven times and rises up again. That is something that you will have till the day you die. Because in your flesh, that is, in this body that we dwell in, there is no good thing. It is always warring against what you want to do, even as Paul said that, the good that I would I do not, and that which I would not I do. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of flesh that I live in? And the realization that Jesus in you is that deliverance is the fact that you have a baby, tiny-like spirit inside that's going stronger every day as you turn your way unto the Lord and seek Him. As it grows stronger, your flesh grows weaker. And then, as time progresses, one day you'll find yourself in heaven, saved, and no longer burdened by the sinful flesh you live in, but rather conformed into His image by the spiritual flesh that God will give you, which is not for this world but the one to come. Because you literally cannot survive in heaven the way you are. But with what he's getting ready for you, oh, you'll abide forever because he promised it. He promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. And you were always on his mind, as the song says, and you were in his heart, even as he is in yours.